Do you find yourself frustrated when you are uh, working on something and you constantly go back and forth in uh, menus and submenus and more submenus just to change uh, one setting? And it's fine if you do it once, uh, but when you're tweaking or adjusting something, it gets uh, really annoying really fast. And then you click away and now the context has changed so the settings are different. Would it be nice if we have all these settings in one panel so that we can look at them at a glance and change them quickly? And it's not so much a time saver as it's the annoyance factor. Even if it takes you a few seconds, if something is tedious and annoying, you end up not doing it so often. And as a result, your whole art will suffer. So to remedy this, I use something that I don't see many people use or talk about, and that is Blender's custom properties. So let me show you how this works. Prime example, I have a character sketch that I want to turn into 3D. And when you're modeling from reference, it's nice to have a front view and a side view and maybe a top view, but that's a rare case, believe it or not. Most of the time, especially if you're learning, you get something like this, right? There it is, now make it into 3D. Or it could be a photo if you are making a realistic sculpture. It's highly unlikely to have a perfect front orthographic view from a photo, or in my case, a sketch of a character. So how do we reference from this? Well, you could do it by eye, uh, but it's quite difficult to look at something and then sculpt in 3D. I know some of you are great artists and can capture the features of a character just by looking at it, but I'm not. And I need a reference in the viewport to model from. Okay, so what's this? It's a view of a character that could be 3D, and we are looking at it from a certain camera angle. So it would make sense to set the image as a reference from the view of the camera, so that when I sculpt the model, I can come into the camera view and see whether I'm close or not. And that's what I do. I'm gonna show you how uh, I make this easier by making a camera rig and how we can use its uh, custom properties to make the adjusting of that camera effortless, which is the point of this video. So let's begin. If you select any object in Blender, you know that in the side panel, under the item tab, uh, and you've seen this, uh, this is where the transformations are. Location, scale, but down here, there's this uh, properties panel, and you click on it and it's empty. So if we come to the properties window here, under the object properties tab, and there's our cube selected, the transforms, it's the same thing. And right at the bottom, we have custom properties. And we don't have any at the moment, so I'm gonna click new. And here it showed in our properties panel, as well as here. Next to the prop, there's this uh, gear icon. If I click it, it brings up a window to edit that property. You can choose the type, name, values, and so on. Now, to explain how they work, I'm going to use an analogy with uh, nodes. Imagine this value node is our property. It has a value slider that we can change, but it doesn't do anything because it's not uh, connected to anything. It's just an empty property. In order for it to change the color, for example, uh, we have to connect the two. And now this property controls this setting. And that's our custom property. It has a value, but it's not connected to anything, so it does nothing. The way we connect properties in Blender is with something called a driver. You may have heard of them. Don't worry, it's not complicated. A driver, in our analogy, uh, would be this noodle. It says this changes this. It drives this setting. So how do we implement this? Let's say I want to change the scale of this cube from this prop. No reason to do so since they are right next to each other, but just as a illustration. I'm gonna rename this to scale. 
and to add a driver there's many ways but the easiest is just to right click on the prop and go copy as new driver then on the scale right click paste driver and you see it turns purple a purple highlight means this property is driven by a driver and now if i change our prop it scales the cube on x I'm gonna paste the driver on Y and Z and now it scales uniform. This is a very simple example, but when you know this, uh, you can go wild and make uh, whatever you wish. So let's make our camera rig. I have a dummy model here and I'm gonna add a camera. And I want this camera to orbit around uh, our model to look from a certain angle and to have a reference image overlaid so that when we look through the camera we can see the reference and our object. So with the camera selected, remember in the object properties, we add a new custom property. I want this to be distance, how close the camera is to our object. So I'm gonna call it distance, a minimum value of zero, Maximum I'll put uh, 10 and default at 1 is OK. We can always change this. OK, now let's create the actual controls that we want to drive. I'm going to add a path curve and in edit mode I'll remove these two points and rotate it by 90 degrees so that it uh, points at negative y. Y negative Y? Well, if we go into front view by hitting uh, number part 1, we see that we are looking from the negative Y direction. There is the standard front view uh, in Blender. And it's crucial that the origin of the curve is at the center of the scene. I'll just increase the thickness so that we can see it better. Now, if we align our camera, so that it's uh, in line with this curve, like so, we can parent the camera to our curve. And now if I select this path, the Y scale will change how close the camera is. And it will also follow the rotation of it. But let's stay organized. I'll rename these to camera guide and put them in a collection. So if I go into camera view, and change the scale on Y, it moves the camera in and out. Also, the Z rotation rotates around the subject. X changes the height that we are looking from. And Y uh, rolls the camera. So let's connect them to our properties. We have the distance prop. Right click, copy as new driver. Then, as I said, in the Y scale of the camera guide, we paste the driver. And there, it works. Now, let's just add a uh, prop for rotation. I want this to be default at zero. And the min and max, uh, you can put anything here, uh, but give it some range. I'll go negative 100 to 100. Hit OK. Then again, copy as new driver and paste it in the Z rotation of the guide object. If when you slide this, uh, it feels that it goes a bit fast, uh, too sensitive, in the property, uh, we can lower this step value. This will make it less sensitive. If it's too slow, just increase the step. Now, in the same manner, I'll add props for height and row. Height control is the X rotation, row is the Y rotation. Just one thing to be aware of, changing the row will alter how uh, rotation and height behave. And it can make it a bit uh, disorientating. So change the row only if you have to. Most of the time uh, you're just gonna use rotation and height. So be aware of that. Now, I've done this like this, so that I can show you something. These properties are arranged in an alphabetical order. 
If we don't want that and want a custom order, uh, we have to number them. So I want distance to remain number one. I can type uh, one in front, okay? But now something's happened. Basically, the driver has broken. It expects a property named distance, but the name has changed and there's no longer such prop. And usually Blender is very robust when it comes to renaming, but here it doesn't work. No worries, just delete the driver and add it again. So if you have a driver that's not working, it's probably because you've renamed something. Delete it and add it again. I'll fix the rest here. Another thing I like to add is a shift. This lives in the camera settings, under lens, shift X and Y. This moves the view of the camera, doesn't move the camera, and it doesn't change the perspective, just uh, shifts the view left and right or up and down. So I'll add those as shift horizontal and shift uh, vertical. Another option I like to add is the focal length and I want to enable depth of field and have a control for the f-stop. This is how narrow or wide our focus is. Basically a lower value will give us a more blurry background. It will give us a bokeh effect if we want that. By default it's at 2.8. Uh, we're going to give it some range from 0 to 10. While we are here in the depth of field, there's this option for focus on object. If I add a new empty object, I'm going to display its name in the viewport so that I can quickly identify it. We can now use this object as a focus point and the camera will focus on its location. So I'll snap it somewhere near the eyes of the character because that's where you normally look at. But if I want to focus on the ear for some reason, uh, I can just move it and use self snapping. And now this will be in full focus. If I drop the f-stop, you can see the background starts to blur. To see this, come to the shading dropdown and check the depth of field. Now when I move our gizmo, you can see the focus changing. Lastly, let's overlay our reference image in the background. Back in the camera settings, we can see these background images. Check it, add a new image, and select our reference. And it appears in the background of our camera. But it's stretched, as you can see. So set it either to fit or crop. Set it to front. And you can then scale or rotate it to fit in your view. And what's cool, we can control the opacity to see our model behind. And now I want a control for this check mark to show and hide the image and a slider for the opacity. So let's add those two properties. For the check mark, set the type to Boolean and then paste the driver to this checkbox. It works and then the opacity slider. And these are the settings that I use the most. If you want something else, now you know how to add it to this list. If you want to see how I model or sculpt these characters yeah, using this reference, leave a comment and I might make a video about it. But for now, I'm gonna show you one way in which this uh, camera rig is really helpful. I wanna capture the shape of these eyebrows, okay? I'll go to the camera view, increase the opacity, and now if I grab the annotate tool, make sure I draw on surface, I can just outline my eyebrow. And it has projected it on my sculpture, and now I have a very useful guide to place my eyebrow. And this works with other stuff, like the shape of the mouth, or I. It's really helpful to have this immediate, direct reference inside of the 3D viewport. Alright, hope this was helpful. See you next time.